Uh, remember the story of American University student? She was a sister. She was elected student government president. Uh, and then she was targeted because of her race with a lawyer's committee. Uh, they took up her case and they actually uh, achieved a landmark uh, settlement uh, using a very interesting legal strategy. Earlier today, I talked to Kristen Clark. Of course, she's the CEO, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. And uh, here is our conversation about uh, that legal victory they achieved. All right, so Kristen, so tell us about this uh, settlement, this American University case. We all remember uh, when this story happened, but for folks who don't know, just give us the backdrop. So Taylor Dumpson is an amazing young African-American woman. She was elected as the first black woman president at American University. And the moment after she won that election, the Daily Stormer and a number of white supremacists uh, and neo-Nazis unleashed a horrendous campaign of racist trolling against her. Um, they hung bananas on campus that said, uh, AKA free, uh, which you know was a reference to the sorority that she belonged to. Um, they uh, called her gorilla. Uh, they used racist language at every turn that made her experience at college a horrendous one. Um, she suffered. Um, she had a hard time concentrating, a hard time eating. She suffered from depression, and this impacted her ability to be a young, thriving student and a student leader on campus. We decided to take Taylor's, up, uh, Taylor's fight up, and what we did was we used a, DC, a unique strategy. Uh, the Washington, D.C., laws uh, here were very helpful. There's a public accommodations law that says that you've got the right to enjoy equal access to um, public accommodations in D.C., whether you're talking about restaurants, hotels, or college campuses like American University. And so the settlement that we announced today is a landmark settlement uh, that focuses on one of the perpetrators and requires that he issue a public apology. Um, requires that he undergo rigorous training to purge white supremacy from his system, um, requires that he carry out 200 hours of community service and more. At the end of the day, we can't just sit back and let this, uh, you know, let white supremacy cut the head again in the future. And so the rigorous terms of this settlement uh, will hopefully leave us in a better place and safer place at the end of the day. Taylor is happy with the terms of this settlement, and we hope that it'll be a model for how we can stamp out white supremacy going forward. And when you talk about um, uh, stamping that out, first of all, we've seen other legal victories against these uh, hate groups uh, in the, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Of course, historically, they've gone after these groups as well. Uh, and uh, and first of all, forcing this guy out of the out of the shadows. I mean, he has to show himself uh, and reveal himself. That's right. Um, he he's going to issue a, a public apology, which is something that Taylor has been waiting for. She's now moved on to law school, and we're looking forward to seeing her on the front lines of the fight one day. But I can't tell you how much uh, she suffered. Uh, at the hands of these racist trolls who made every day of her experience in college a difficult one. And it really speaks to the fact that the racism and white supremacy that we saw a century ago in this country is still alive and well today in 2018. Um, and we hope that the perpetrator here uh, will have a heavy hand in going after his counterparts, uh, helping to expose uh, his counterparts and helping um, other people who might be ready to lead the white supremacist movement find an exit door. Also, this should be uh, should be uh, an important signal to people uh, they, that they should not just take these things lying down. They should be very aggressive and going after these white nationalists. We are seeing uh, an, a, a significant uptick uh, in their activities uh, in the age of Donald Trump. Uh, and And the goal should be to really use every remedy uh, to go after these organizations, these individuals. That's right. But I do want to underscore um, that at the end of the day, the targets and the victims are in a real precarious position. And we can't forget that at the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, we have made 
the fight against our hate crime crisis a priority, a top priority. And we have a project, Stop Hate, that's anchored by the 844-9-NO-HATE hotline. Um, but, but it is hard for people to stand up if they don't have resources or an organization that's willing to stand behind them and have their back. Um, you know, they in, in, were insightful in the words that they used. Um, they threatened her. Um, they made her fear for her life. And um, it, it's hard to expect everyone in a situation like hers to stand up and have the courage. We were glad that she was able to do so with her, um, do so here. Uh, but we had her back every step of the way, and we're prepared to stand with other victims who are facing hate in our country today. African Americans remain um, the primary victims of our hate crime crisis in the country, um, and we're here to stand with them and fight back. All right, Christian Clark, Lawrence Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Oh, that's that Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. Now, a word from one of our Roland Martin Unfiltered partners. You've heard me say it before, and I will say it again. Write down this website, marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org. I'm going to tell you why it matters. Legal marijuana has grown to become a $9 billion industry in roughly six years. Forbes magazines predicts the market will continue to grow to nearly $50 billion in the next 10 years. So whether you like it or not, legal marijuana is a growing industry and it is only going to get bigger. Now, if you're an investor, you get it. You look for business models that are easy to understand and industries that are trending up. Our friends at Transatlantic Real Estate made their business very simple. They buy land that supports legal marijuana operations and lease it to high paying tenants. So you are investing in the landlord of a licensed marijuana farm. Stop working so hard for your money. Let your money start working for you by investing in the legal cannabis industry. You can invest as little as $300 up to $10,000, but you can't wait. This crowdfunding opportunity is only available for a few more days. They say that you either make things happen, watch things happen, or sit around wondering what happened. Don't be the person watching and wondering. Don't let another investment boom get away from you. It's time to make something happen for you, your finances, and your family. And don't forget my pro tip. To be included, you must complete and confirm your application. And be sure to complete the process. Go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game, folks. Do it now before time runs out. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Because guess what? We come back live January 3rd. The blackest show on all of digital cable and broadcast. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Hello. Y'all want some of this? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. There's only one show out here, folks, in the digital world that's focused on you. Because here's the piece. I ain't afraid of Fox News. Come back live January 3rd. Martin.